or it hasn't been enough for Randy. Instead, he reached out to touch the hearts of countless others through his unselfish and tireless efforts extended towards very special arts. The following is a recently produced television program on very special arts, which is airing in markets around the world and narrated by Faith Daniels. Hello, I'm Faith Daniels. The freedom to express what's in our hearts and minds is a universal human need, and the joy of artistic expression is a universal reward. Art enriches all of our lives. It transcends all barriers for everyone. But for people who happen to have physical or mental disabilities, the need to express can be even more important. The creation of art offers unlimited possibilities for freedom of expression. Since 1974, an organization called Very Special Arts has been creating opportunities for millions of people with and without disabilities to experience the freedom and personal rewards of artistic expression. These opportunities have been expanded through the efforts of world-renowned artist Hiro Yamagata and the Yamagata Foundation. Working with Very Special Arts, Mr. Yamagata has recognized the importance of visual arts opportunities for all people. The Yamagata Institute was established to bring artists from around the world to exchange ideas and artistic expression. This summer, a group of international artists came to the Very Special Arts International Training Center outside New York City to experience the unbounding educational and cultural benefits of art. I came to this workshop I didn't really know what to expect I had no idea as to what it would be like or how it would work out the fellows are a very very diverse um, bunch of people and with mixed um, backgrounds and um, some people have disabilities others don't It's a way of assembling people together uh, to, to share their, their ideas, to share their life experience. They came from around the world, artists with talent and promise, selected by very special arts. For two weeks, they painted, made lasting friendships, attended workshops with professional artists and learned techniques for working with people with disabilities. And just because you have a, 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 a physical disability or mental disability does not, does not mean you don't have something important to say. Freedom of expression is important for everyone. And, you know, regardless of your physical condition, regardless of your race, regardless of your background, um, uh, it's an empowering force that will carry through your entire life. Randy Souders is a professional artist from Texas. He came to the Institute to speak on the importance of art in his life. I was injured when I was 17 and uh, in a diving uh, accident. And uh, I've spent the last 20 years in a wheelchair learning to deal with that, uh, that special, unique kind of world and the, the unique challenges that uh, uh, come from finding yourself somewhat limited physically. My involvement with art was, was the way that I rebuilt my, uh, my uh, uh, shattered self-esteem after my injury by realizing that, that my art was not locked up in my hand, which, which wasn't working anymore, but that it was in my, my head and in my heart, um, and that there were ways to, to get my, my, my uh, 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 art out. Um, I, I really feel it was it was a vital part of of, of my uh, rehabilitation uh, uh, from such a traumatic physical injury. Many of the artists at the Yamagata Institute have first-hand experience of the power of art. Me at this stage of my life, very different from how I was when I was growing up. I had um, a lot of problems, orthopedic problems, and I work with the crutches with 
canes and so on, in wheelchair too at times and so on. Uh, from very early, art was always therapeutic for me on a personal level. Art was the way of escaping, a way of feeling good about me. I was involved in an automobile accident in which I broke my back. I think the, the disabilities initially that I encountered were, I think, within me. You always, I think, especially after a traumatic situation where you physically are tr changed, um, you think, I can't, or you, you question your limitations. I have cerebral palsy. It, it happened at birth. My artistic soul overrides the, the physical challenges that I'm faced with dealers. If there is an image I need to, to make, I will find a way to make that image. Despite the healing power of art, many people with disabilities never get the opportunity to experience it. Often they're blocked by barriers of prejudice and lack of understanding. We should uh, take it upon ourselves to um, uh, uh, really fight for the right to get into the, the mainstream of society instead of always being outsiders looking in. If you want to be creative, if you want to express yourself, uh, if you would like to do this uh, for the rest of your life. That's your choice. You're in control and you're in power and, uh, and it's just a matter of being assertive and going for it. I turned around to look at this grenade but I never saw it. It exploded. When I'm working in my studio, it's always dark. Um, there, there are no lights in my studio when I'm in there alone, so it's like uh, working in, in the middle of the night, uh, out in the middle of the desert, uh, where, there's, where it's totally dark. When Michael Naranjo sculpts, the world around him ceases to exist. He becomes lost in another world, remembering the days of his youth the days before Michael Naranjo became blind. His talent as an artist and his determination to succeed in spite of his disability have made Naranjo an important advocate for very special arts. He was invited this year to conduct a workshop at the Yamagata Institute. I ended up in the uh, war in Vietnam and uh, I was there for about a month and a half in Vietnam and one day in a rice field we got caught in an ambush. I turned around to look at this grenade but I never saw it, it exploded. Then I, I knew that I was going to die so I, I was suspended. It was like being suspended in space. And from that moment on, I was blind, totally blind. By um, losing my sight in Vietnam, I think it affected my uh, dreams of becoming a sculptor at the beginning because um, the uncertainty of um, not knowing what was going to happen to my life or if I would even be able to sculpt anymore. But once I got my hands on the clay and started playing with it, uh, I found out in a very short period of time, actually in a matter of probably uh, three, four hours, that I could still sculpt. Uh, and the first thing that I made was a, was a worm, an inchworm. And um, an inchworm is something that a child makes. So my beginnings after I was blind was were creations that a child would make. I think art is an incredible means for um, displacing a disability. It makes you feel good. It also makes uh, people have a means, I think often, of communicating. You don't need words, 
you're expressing these feelings that are inside you and uh, you're sharing them with people and everyone needs to to feel good about succeeding accomplishing something when i scope it's like um it's like magic it's like being in another place um i i forget about being blind i don't know that i'm blind when i was a little boy my brother and i used to go hunting along the rio grande and we would start from the pueblo in the early mornings and walk towards a field and hunt for rabbits pheasants quail and and towards the middle of the day we would end up at the river we would stand by the banks of the rio grande and we would wonder if we should cross the river and hunt ducks on the other side of the river there's this one sculpture of my wife um when she was um nursing our first daughter that's gentle and and um it's peaceful so i think the majority of my pieces uh bring the sound of this gentleness this peaceful feeling of of movement of life there's not there's not too many things that he can't do for example i know he's expressed at times he would like to be able to just get out the door and go somewhere on his own and he can't do that and i'm sure that that's frustrating for him at times but when he's with his work um he's in total control he's in charge of how it comes out uh, what he's going to make what the subject matter is if he's going to melt it down and start all over i think each little thing that we accomplish gives us the um assuredness to know that yeah it's okay to go on and i think that's one of michael's greatest strengths is his determination to get the job done and to try i think he really likes a challenge to keep that challenge going keep that challenge alive the most important thing with um an and disabled individual is just having the opportunity to try um whether it, it it can be done or not will never be known unless we are given the opportunity uh to try what i want you to do is to make a half circle for the international artists at the yamagata institute meeting and working with michael naranjo was a dramatic encounter with the rewards of freedom of expression but as they were soon to learn from another professional artist the struggle to reap those rewards can often seem overwhelming to people with mental and physical disabilities the world is filled with barriers the 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 idea of going outside and going shopping or going for a walk or you know do the simplest thing that you can define uh is difficult what's it like not to be able to walk not to have full control of your hands to have muscles that strain just to lift and hold a pencil For some there's no need to imagine but when these artists return home from their 2 weeks at the Yamagata Institute many of them will be teaching art to children and adults who happen to have disabilities which is why Juanita McNeely a professional artist from New York City was invited to give them a better understanding of what it's like when the disability is yours What I want to do is rig you up those who are disabled physically to the outside world and those who appear not to be physically disabled to the outside world and then let you just go in your studio and paint or uh do whatever you've been doing in your studio uh, I wanted them to understand particularly those who are not handicapped who who might not understand what it's like um to be in a wheelchair um to to know when to ask for help and when not to ask for help to to understand what it's like to get into a um painting studio. I don't want someone who wants to be an artist to have someone go back to them and say your handicap only allows for you to do this. Instead I want them to go back and say you want to be an artist? Well, you're no better no worse than anybody else as far as what you can do, but see what you have to offer. I found that Beatrice who was from Argentina was very disturbed by having the gauze around her eyes. 
when it came off she was almost in tears she said and and she felt what it was like to to try very hard to see and you could see but you couldn't see clearly so when she goes back if she comes across someone like that she's going to have an understanding of what that's like david was was uh amazing he was really uh a fine artist and uh, was willing to try anything. Juanita McNeely has been learning to accommodate since the day she and her husband Jeremy were traveling in France and she fell. Before uh, my accident I was teaching and uh, on days off would paint and was very active about the city and Jeremy realized that um, the best thing for me to do was to get back to painting and I started painting. Painting um, makes me happy I guess because it is my life. I paint on the wall and I use different nails and um, I slide the painting up uh, onto a high nail when I want to paint at the bottom. The one key thing, the larger you paint, if you don't have a very large expanse to get back from, is that you want to use some, some trick to uh, see what it looked like at a distance. So I use binoculars, reverse, or the reducing lens. And then Jeremy has designed and made me a brush holder uh, where you can actually put the brushes um, down. You don't you don't have to hold them, you know, uh, in each finger and then try also to be in a chair or, you know, getting up and down. So everything is very accessible. Outside her studio, it's a different story. New York City is probably one of the least accessible places you can be. The idea of going outside and going shopping or going for a walk or, you know, do the simplest thing that you can define uh, is difficult. For McNeely, challenging the barriers of her disability is a daily struggle, but no challenge gives her more purpose than the attitudes which often keep people with disabilities from expressing themselves. It is the reason she agreed to work with the artists at the Yamagata Institute. The idea is to drop the idea that they're handicapped and to just think of them as artists. Judge them as professional artists coming up. Judge them as art students. Um, put them out in the mainstream because that's where they're going to be in the end. And that's the whole idea is to mainstream everyone so that they're thought of as nothing but who they are. I am the same Juanita McNeely I was before, uh, no better, no worse, the same painter I was before, uh, hopefully getting better with every year, <laughs> and that's who I am. Before I had my accident, I had never really noticed anybody in a wheelchair. I never knew anybody who was in a wheelchair. And I began to realize that people who are disabled are societally invisible. For people with disabilities, every day there's another barrier to knock down. Through the efforts of Very Special Arts and the Yamagata Institute, some of these barriers are falling, but many remain. Most people assume I'm far more limited than I am. The general assumption seems to be to confine that person to that chair. I get anger comes first. Once you went through the anger, I, I came in touch with the hurt that the anger was protected me from. Before I had my accident, I had never really noticed anybody in a wheelchair. I never knew anybody who was in a wheelchair. 
And I began to realize that people who are disabled are societally invisible. People have a very hard time talking directly to someone who's disabled. If anyone is with the disabled individual, they'll talk to the other person. And it's like being invisible. People simply think that um, because I'm blind, I'm also, I don't exist. And so they'll talk to my wife. And um, suddenly when I talk to them, they're surprised that, that I'm there. I've suddenly appeared, that I have a voice, that I am real. It's difficult to convince people that we can do many things. Just give us a chance. It's your God-given right to do this. If you so choose that, that you should have the ability and the freedom to express yourself however you see fit. When I witness um, uh, one art artist whose arms uh, were, were barely as long as my hand doing a painting three times the size I've ever, ever done, I'm thinking, why haven't I ever tried something that big? You know, there's, there's got to be a way around that. Um, so for me, being with, with these other artists was a way to kind of open my eyes a bit and uh, push me a little further and a little harder. It's very good for you, I think, in the sense of yourself, if you are pushed to your limits and encouraged to, to, to be everything that you can possibly be. I remember when, after I was blind, and the first time I had to go across a road at a stoplight, my instructor was standing alongside me and, and told me to take my time. And I stood there at that intersection. I was afraid, totally afraid, of taking that first step to get across that road. And the light changed several times before I started across. But it only took that first step. And once I took that first step, then the rest was easy. For Very Special Arts and for Hiro Yamagata, this year's international program in the visual arts is just the beginning. Over the next five years, Very Special Arts and the Yamagata Foundation will continue to bring together emerging and professional artists from all fields, providing new awareness to the benefits of art, inspiring each of us with the joy of creative achievement and the rewards of freedom of expression.